Samuel Whitmore was born in England on July 27, 1695, and came to North America as a captain in His Majesty's Army, fighting the French in 1745. He was involved in the capture of the French stronghold, and there captured a French officer's sword, which was cherished for the rest of his life. About his capture, all Sam would say was that the previous owner of the sword had died suddenly. After the war, he stayed in the colonies, purchasing a farm in Massachusetts. His house in Massachusetts Avenue still exists today. In 1758, war broke out again between England and France, and again, Fort Louisburg had to be taken. At 64 years of age, Sam volunteered and joined a colonial regiment which reduced the fort to rubble. He then went on and joined General James Wolfe in a successful assault against Quebec. The 1763 Indian Wars in the West next attracted Sam's attention. He left his wife, children, and grandchildren to attend his farm. He rode off to join the colonial force. He returned home some months later with a brace of dueling pistols as a souvenir. And here again, all Sam would say is that the previous owner died suddenly. It is recorded that Sam believed in American independence, stating that he wanted his descendants to be able to enact their own laws and not be subject to a distant king. So it's not surprising when he again took up arms on April 19, 1775. That night, he watched as Colonel Smith led his column of 70 soldiers through. He was probably concerned but the British had come out of Boston before and there had not been any serious trouble. Later that morning, he heard rumors that there had been fighting at Lexington and Concord. But when General Percy marched through the town with an additional 1,400 soldiers, Sam's military experience told him there was serious trouble. Why else would the British be sending reinforcements? Word had come that the combined heavily engaged columns of Smith and Percy were retreating toward the town. They were burning homes along the way. So the aged warrior decided to take action in spite of being 80 years old. He strapped on his captured French sword, stuck his brace of dueling pistols in his belt, put on his powder horn and shot bag, took his musket from its place on the fireplace mantle and went to war. Sam selected a position that gave him an excellent view of the road from Lexington and sat down to wait. His fellow Minutemen pleaded with him to find a safer position, but he chose to ignore them. His fellow Minutemen started firing at the oncoming British of the 47th Regiment of Foot, falling back to reload, then firing again. Sam waited. Finally, when the column was directly in front of him, he stood and fired his musket. One fell dead. He drew his two pistols, firing both at almost point-blank range. Another fell dead, and a third fell mortally wounded. The British soldiers were on top of him. He had not the time to reload his musket or pistols, so drawing his sword, he started flaying away at the bayonet welding soldiers. A soldier levied his musket at point-blank rage and fired. The 69 caliber ball struck Sam in the cheek, tearing away part of his face and throwing him to the ground. Sam valiantly tried to raise, fending off bayonet thrusts with his sword, but he was so overpowered. Struck in the head with a musket gun, he went down again, then was bayoneted 13 times and left for dead. The British continued their fight through the streets, which turned out to be the costliest action of the day. They left 40 of their soldiers dead in the town and another 80 were wounded, half the casualties of the day. After the British column had fought its way clear, the townspeople and Minutemen started to search for their wounded compatriots. Several had seen Sam Whitmore's last stand and approached to remove his body. To everyone's astonishment, Sam was not only still alive, but conscious and still full of fight. Laying there, he was trying to reload his musket. Using a door as a stretcher, Sam was carried to the tavern, which was being used as emergency hospital. Dr. Nathaniel Tufts attended to Sam. He cut off his bloody clothes and exposed the gaping bayonet wounds. Sam's face was horribly injured. The doctor knew the injuries were fatal.
stating that it wouldn't do any good to even dress the wounds. But Sam's family and friends insisted that the doctor do the best he could. He tried to make the old man as comfortable as possible. After his wounds were attended to, Sam was carried to his home to die surrounded by his family. To everyone's utter amazement, Captain Sam Whitmore lived. He recovered and remained active for another 18 years. He was terribly scarred, but he was always proud of what he had done for his adopted country. He is quoted to having stated that he would have taken the same chances again. You can question the old soldier's technical judgment, making the stand in a manner he did, but you can never question his bravery. He also proved you are never too old. Sam died on February 3, 1793, at the age of 98, and is buried in the town cemetery.